Ooh, welcome back, everybody! I went and immediately presented things off screen because I wanted to save some time, and literally the first thing I presented ended up prompting a response from Tay. So, it ends up, it turns out I didn't really save any time whatsoever, so that's a little unfortunate, but it is what it is. <laughs> Anywho, everyone, finally, we get some things done today, probably. Hmm, it looks like only this section of the front yard was burned by the spilled kerosene. It seems there was no damage to the building itself. Hmm. That's why it didn't turn into a bigger incident. Well, the kids should have known better. There are some pranks that you can't, can and can't do. Well, that's certainly true. I doubt the kid would want to hear that from someone calling herself the Great Thief. Ah, what's the, what's the kid know? I mean, he doesn't know any better. He's probably like, Oh, a Great Thief! Oh my gosh! Whoa! That's probably what it'd be all about. It's like, oh, okay, there you go. Boom. All right, well, she had that to say about this. I figured these two talk about anything? No, they didn't. No, they did not. Okay, so the only ones that talked was them and then them. Okay, so I'll talk to them. Here, let's just talk about some things. Some new things that we just got a second ago. What kind of pup dumps out kerosene and lights it out on fire as a prank? Thanks to that, some valuable evidence for this case has gone up in smoke. Agent Lang, your father relentlessly investigated the SS5 incident. During his investigation, did he find any information on the child who started the fire? So you noticed it too, huh? Truth is, I've thought about the same thing myself, but... Your father never revealed his own thoughts to anyone. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. The truth is like a needle hidden in a haystack. It seems his feelings on the matter are more complicated than he lets on. <laughs> Mr. Lang, haven't you forgotten something important? A wolf's nose should be able to sniff out the truth from a haystack. <laughs> You're right. To think the little crow girl would be the one to tell me that. She is my assistant for good reason. And Mr. Edge was assistant for good reason, you know. Oh my gosh! And no comment about reading minds, I see. Okay. Well, anyway, you got nothing to say about that. That's, uh, that's good. So I guess we'll go ahead and talk to, uh... We'll go ahead and talk to Courtney and John now, because we need to do that, obviously. John first, because I believe that was the order we went in. All right, John, what do you got to say about fire? What's that supposed to be? Well, John, that is clearly a fire. No, that's not a fire. That's just ash. What are you freaking talking about? Oh, Edgeworth, don't be stupid. It's not fire. Don't be dumb. Alright, nothing to say about that. Courtney! I know you have some really long sayings about, you know, things. But it is what it is. Okay, well, that one was actually short. Never mind. And that one was short, too. Oh, cool. Since those were short, then I guess it doesn't really matter in the end. So I suppose we should probably... Examine the body. I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking bleh, looking nook and cranny. Alright, flowers. Yellow flowers fall in here. It's called a lion lily. Indeed, Francisca told us earlier. Apparently it comes from Asia. Yup. In the language of flowers, I think it means the bond between partners in crime. It's the bond between parent and child. Yeah, it comes from Asia. Jeez, I wonder how that kid got out here. I mean, jeez. Why would California have Asian flowers randomly? <laughs> no idea. No idea. I assume this is the victim's cell phone. That's right! Um, apparently Mr. Cameron gave his eyewitness testimony over the cell phone. What do you mean by over the cell phone? After Cameron found the president, it seems that he called his girlfriend. But she didn't answer the phone, so Cameron left the message on her answering machine. The tape is in the case. Like, the tape is in the case files too. You want to hear it? Please. Hello, Jill. Are you asleep already? I'm in front of the facility now, but something's not right. President Hong is here of all places, and what's more, crud. The light just went off. I can barely see a thing now. I can't believe it, but it almost looks like he's being kidnapped. I thought I'd let you know. Yeah, no one says that. I thought I'd let you know. <laughs> what? What was that sound at the end? 
It seems he was attacked while he was still on the phone. Agent Lang, may I ask? What was the name of Mr. Cameron's beloved? I'm pretty sure I heard her name was Jill Crane. Oh shoot! Wah, wah, wah. So it was true. D did you say Jill? This was why she was seeking revenge for 12 long years. The feelings and the items Miss Crane inherited from her beloved brought her to the auction. She had come to exact revenge on the conductor, Blaze. But Miss Crane tried to get revenge on Blaze, right? She may have wanted to get revenge on him for covering up the kidnapping case. Or perhaps she thought Blaze himself w was the kidnapper. Cameron's testimony jotted down on my organizer, left on Jill Crane's answering machine. Well, ain't that just a doozy of a little evidence now, isn't it? Who would have guessed? Hmm. We're well, gonna examine the body. Jack Cameron was a freelance journalist. He was killed because he witnessed the president's kidnapping. The blood really stands out in the recreation. It's giving me the heebie-jeebies. Even in the original photo, it looks brutal enough. A lot of blood was spilled. The back of his head is covered in blood. That must be where all the blood spilled from. According to the autopsy report, he was struck in the back of the head with the brick. Indeed. It's likely that the killer approached Mr. Cameron from behind. That sounds like a contradiction what we just heard, though. It sounded like he was, like, witnessing the kidnapping right there, so how could the kidnapper approach him from behind? Hmm... It doesn't make any sense! It literally makes none. Hmm. Is the victim holding something in his right hand? It's also written in the case files, um... It seems he was holding onto a button. A button? Did he tear it off the culprit's clothes? Hmm... I don't know. Bloodstained button data jotted down my organizer. Cameron's corpse held it tightly in his right hand, stained with Cameron's blood. Hmm. I do wonder. I do wonder. What could the answer be for that, though? I, I don't know. I don't know. What about the camera? Hmm. The victim was carrying a camera. Oh, according to the case files, it seems he only managed to take a single photo. Um, here it is. Hmm. Hmm. Why does it? I mean, I know it's not, but why? That, look, that looks like the same freaking suit that Gregory Edgeworth wears. I don't get it. This is. Isn't that the president? He's being held at gunpoint. This must be the scene the victim witnessed. Well, the person in, in the coat must be the kidnapper. It's your father, Mr. Edgeworth. Indeed, it seems like some sort of disguise. If the logic of Agent Lang's father is correct, then this person should be Patricia Rowland. That sure as heck doesn't look like Patricia Rowland. But why is there only one photo? Perhaps he was killed before he can take any more. Hmm. Interesting. Cameron's photo data jotted down my organizer. Only a single photo of the president's kidnapping was taken. Touch check one for details. I mean, I guess someone could have been kidnapping him, and then maybe there was an accomplice after the fact that was the one that did the killing. I guess that could make sense. This is the brick that was used as the murder weapon. Murder weapon brick? Found near Cameron's body? Did it come from the facility grounds? Maybe. You can find bricks like this all over the garden. You must have used one of them as a weapon. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know why, but I kind of forgot that was a brick for a second. I thought it was like some kind of carrying pouch. I was like, wait. No. Duh, it's a brick. What am I doing? Of course I know what it is. Let's not be stupid now. Even though I'm stupid all the time. Alright, three more things to present. And then we'll finally be able to move on with some logic, probably. And after that, I don't know. I honestly have no clue whatsoever. Actually, do I need to inspect any more suspicious looking nook and crannies? I should look at that real quick. I already checked this area all earlier, but it never hurts to take another look. Alright, so all the suspicious looking nook and crannies have been inspected. That's good to know. Um, I'm gonna talk to you now. Yeah. Come on, Lang. Tell me about this tape, would ya? I have nothing to say about that tape. Lang Z says, Nothing said when nothing needs to be said. 
Well, okay then. Well, that's fine. It's fine. Good job, Lang. You don't have to talk about it if you don't want to. It's alright. It's alright. I forgive you. <laughs> alright, alright. No, stop. Stop talking. Why is this one so long? Jeez Louise. Okay. So that wasn't important. As sad as that is to say. I wish it was very important, but it really isn't. Okay, Cameron's testimony. Nah, I don't care about that testimony of that old man who's older than me. Well, I mean, he's actually not older than me. I mean, he is older than me, but, you know, he's been dead longer than I've been alive almost. Almost. He's got nothing to say about any of that. Alrighty, Courtney. Your turn. If your son doesn't want to speak, maybe you will speak for me. I don't appreciate that. Why would you want to crush that? Like, come on now. That was the Jill Crane. Why would you even want to do something like that? Come on now. I wonder if we got a profile for Jill Crane now. Ah, we do. And we also have one for Jack Cameron. Age dead, gender male, a journalist, the victim in the incident 12 years ago, Jill Crane's boyfriend. Jill Crane, age 33. I mean, she's age dead too, but you know, whatever. Gender female, a member of the PIC, lost her life trying to avenge Cameron. Shame. What a shame indeed. Also, I don't think I presented anything to her yet, so I probably shouldn't have done that yet. Wait, I did. I actually did, didn't I? Freaking... Ugh. Alright, it's fine. I did do it already. I forgot. Ah, oh, jeez. I'm so fast to forget sometimes. Okay, logic time. I don't think there's anything left. Other than just, you know, three footprints and flower beds. Connect. Boom. Gotcha. You were done for. Nailed it. That was so good. We finally got rid of those footprints. My gosh, we were holding on to that logic for a year. Perhaps this is the true nature of the monster's footprints. I mean, not really a year, but you know what I mean. Like, what was it, like two a week? Two weeks, something like that, worth of episodes that we've been holding on to that logic? My goodness. True nature? Then we got in beginning part one, and we held on to it through beginning part two and most of middle part one as well. My goodness. Compare the positions of the three footprints and the three flower beds on the left. Ah! The exposed areas of dirt match the areas where the flower beds were. So, Blaze dug holes in front of where each of the three flower beds used to be. Why? Exactly. Now, why would he do such a thing? That, that, your guess is as good as mine. It's obvious. He did it for this reason. <laughs> oh my gosh, and then he's gonna make me present something and I'll be like, No! I don't know! I believe we have a piece of evidence- No! 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 Shut up, Edgeworth! We do not! We have no such evidence! I believe we have a piece of evidence that tells us why. Why did Blaze dig holes in the ground near the flower beds? Uh... I don't know! Am I supposed to know? Why did Blaze dig holes in the ground near the flower beds? Hmm. Oh, hmm. Alrighty. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I don't know. Concrete's broken. The ground beneath them is exposed. They look like giant footprints. Uh, nope. Combination lock in front of the entrance stayed locked. Nope. Taking yesterday, the body and monster's footprints are not visible. Why? I don't know why. Why would he? Why would he do that, though? According to the president on the roof side, the president was never seen coming down. Two nights ago, the president never passed through the 51st floor storeroom. Fire were in the Grand Tower today. The driver was inside. Recorded last night. Blah, 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 blah. Monster footprint to be seen. One of my blaze the best when he dug the monster's footprint like holes. Hmm. Notice why I was covering time, Mr. Master's Mansion. There are no clues of the whereabouts of Dover's son or Gustavi's son, who was. Until the day before the incident, regularly visited by at Mr. Master's mansion. I don't think that's related. For a nightly connection with Dogen, but that wouldn't be related either, because this is wait, actually it would be, wouldn't it? Almost certain there's a connection between Nightly and Dogen, Dogen's chess partner whose identity remained unknown until now is actually Nightly blah blah. Marshall well, interrogated him in the Western Warden's office. I get him to confess that he's one of Dogen's henchmen, the thing that he laid to rest in front of the flower bed twelve years ago. You simply must retrieve it. Well, I would assume that's actually it, actually, but... Let me look at the other stuff real quick. Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm pretty sure it is that one, actually. I'm just not even... Why even bother? Nope, go for it! 
The reports from Patricia Rowland to Blaze the Best. It said that something was laid to rest in front of the flower bed. So Blaze was following Mr. Rowland's instructions to dig it up? But why would he dig up three holes? The court didn't state which of the three flower beds the item was in front of. Oh, so Blaze didn't know exactly where to dig. That's why he had to dig up all three spots. Most likely, yes. I'm sure Blaze himself was none too happy about that. He went through all that trouble. I wonder what he was trying to dig up. What did Blaze dig up? Instructed by Patricia, something was dug up near the flower beds. Good question. Really good question. We've learned pretty much all that we can about the situation at the time of the murder. Oh, in that case, is there another scene you'd like to recreate? Yes, would you do the honors? I would like you to recreate the scene when the victim witnessed the president's kidnapping. Right. I'll recreate the scene based on Mr. Cameron's photo. Good job, Kay, you did it. Mr. Cameron is standing in the middle of the flower beds. And my father's over there pointing a gun at the president. And, and the president and this kidnapper are standing on the road. My old man based his initial investigation on this man's eyewitness testimony. As a result, it led him to believe that the kidnapping with, and this facility were, were related. And that's how he came to suspect the head of the orphanage, Patricia Rowland. Yeah. But in court, Blaze the best treated this testimony as if it meant nothing. Why would he do that? The president and his kidnapper were not standing inside the orphanage grounds. So a connection between the orphanage and the kidnapping was difficult to prove. I see. It's not like they were seen inside the orphanage, after all. Tuh. No matter how much evidence the detective gathers at the, at, at the crime scenes, it doesn't mean squat at the prosecutor won't use it in court. Blaze the Best had some kind of connection with Patricia Rowland. I figured they had some kind of deal going on. In other words, you'd think that Blaze was one of the kidnappers. Was Blaze a kidnapper? Blaze had Patricia found not guilty. Were they partners in crime? Possibly. However, your father was convinced that Patricia Rowland was the culprit. Your father was a highly capable investigator, I presume. Might he have had some other basis for conclusion besides the eyewitness testimony? Yeah, I figure he did, but I have no idea what it was. My old man never really talked much about this, this case. Agent Lang's father, Dai Long Lang. President Hong's most trusted confidant. The truth he discovered was suppressed by Blaze the Best. First, we must find that hidden truth. If you can, anyway. If you can. Uh, well... There's no real reason to go back, is there? I don't think so. Know anything new to my organizer? No, I don't. I'll do not at all. Okie dokie, then. So we got that, we got this. Alright, let's look at this first. I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. I just kind of realized that snowman's different, isn't it? What about this? Cameron took a photo of the president from this spot. And he also called Miss Crane, right? At that time, the killer was already behind him. Holding the murderous brick. The gosh dang murderous brick. I can walk right through him. Oh my gosh. Watch out, he's right behind you. Also, why would the blood still be there? The blood still should still be there. So shouldn't that be a contradiction right there? Like, hey, look at that, it's blood. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, let's look at this here. First of all, I know this is not right because that was smaller before. Um, about the snowman. When we recreated the scene where Mr. Cameron was killed, it had already melted. The scarf was all soggy and one of its button eyes were missing. Oh. Indeed. At this stage, it appears that most of its original form was still intact. Although, there's one spot that looks unnaturally lacking. Poor thing, I bet some naughty kid must have plucked it off. 
Although from a thief's perspective, that kid does have some promise. Was it plucked off by one of the children at the orphanage? No. Perhaps. It was taken by an entirely different person altogether. Yes, yes, you'd be right. I'm curious, this is 1.15 a.m. And the... oh gosh. Okay, so we gotta question some more things right now. Oh, you wanna hear about the little thief's newest feature? Not particularly. What? Come on, don't say that! This is the latest feature, we can now recreate the scene as a, at different times. Just went ahead and started explaining it. Right now we can recreate the scene based on the police investigation report. And Mr. Cameron's eyewitness testimony. Please let me know whenever you want to switch scenes. Yep, I'll do just that, because I want to see what time it is. Recreate the scene based on Mr. Cameron's photo. Doesn't something seem off to you? Indeed, compare the recreation with the information we've gathered. There appears to be a clear contradiction. Oh, I know something was off. I knew something was off. Let's compare the evidence we have on hand. With the scenes recreated from the fo photograph. Alright, so it said 115, right? So you want to recreate the scene based on the police investigation data? This is the time that the body was discovered when the police were investigating the scene. <coughs> oh, six hours later. Jeez Louise. Okay, I didn't realize that now. 7.22 a.m. That's an oddly specific time. Oh, okay. The scene based on Mr. Cameron's eyewitness testimony. This is the moment of the incident when the president was being kidnapped. I recreate the scene. Okay, thank you. Now then. Now then. Before I get to the deucing, it's the president's kidnapper. Let's try drawing out whatever we can from their appearance. Right, I got it. Their appearance. Their appearance. First things first. The kidnapper threatened the president with a gun. Look at how they're holding the gun. It's like they're trying to show it off. They're totally not cool. Unfortunately, we cannot see the person's face because it's hidden by the coat and hat. And look at that popped collar. It's like they're trying to be all that. Totally not cool. The body seems relaxed, suggesting that they had a composed mental state. They even had one hand stuffed in their pocket. Totally not cool at all. Okay, I'm sorry, but that's... Stuff I've drawn out from their appearance. That may be true, but... But... Di Jun Hong, 12 years ago he was still the president of Zhang Fa. Doesn't he seem a bit younger? Though well, it might be hard to tell since it's so dark. Indeed. And with the situation being what it was, his facial expression seems a bit strained. I wonder where the president was taken after this. We don't know that yet. However, the answer to that question lies here. It should become clear when we continue the investigation. Oh, should it now? Well, what about the lamp? This is the photo he took, but it looks kind of dark. I guess he wasn't able to bring out the subject's charm and make it brighter photo. Okay, the reason this photo is so dark is not because of the subject. It's because the street lamp nearby was broken, you see. You see? Oh my gosh, not you too, Edgeworth. Huh? Uh, ah! So you don't have to rely on natural lighting. You can use lamps to light up the subject. I never thought about that. Nice one, Mr. Edgeworth. I don't think she understood what I was trying to tell her. Or did she? Maybe she understood it completely. Alright, alright. Well, it's time we do the things. I suppose. Well, actually, before I deduce, let me talk to these guys again. I want to be sure that they don't have anything new to say about this recreation. Nope, nothing. I'm going to assume the other two aren't going to either, so I'm not going to bother with that. So, in that case, now we're going to deduce. I might want to go a little higher, just in case. Just in case. I don't know. I don't trust that. I didn't... I didn't... No. No, stop. Stop. There we go. Okay, right there. Perfect. That better be perfect anyway. Bloodstained butt. The snowman. Wouldn't you say it's missing something? Ah, it's right eye is missing. Precisely. And what's more, that missing eye happens to be in our possession. 
the button that Mr. Cameron was holding on to. It's got the exact same design as the snowman's left eye. We assume this button was indeed the snowman's eye. A huge contradiction arises. You know, that's another thing that's kind of funny. They try to pass this off as Japanifornia, and yet there's snow here. I'm sorry, but it doesn't really snow. Like, I don't live in California, but it doesn't freaking snow in California unless you're in the mountains. It's the same as freaking Arizona, basically. Like, unless it's, unless you're in the mountains, you're not going to get snow during the even during the winter, so... And I assume this probably takes place, like, in Japanifornia. I'm assuming it's, like, L.A. or something like that. There's not going to be snow in L.A. Like, ever. <laughs> like, come on now. Oh, jeez. If this button is a snowman's eye, what contradiction arises? I mean, I understand there's some, there's only so much they can really do when they're trying to pass off Japan as California, but still, you know, I'm just saying now. Oh, anyway, the, the, the location of the- I need to read this again. If this button is a snowman's eye, what contradiction arises? If this button is a snowman's eye, what contradiction arises? The location of the victim? The location of snowman? The location of the president? Huh? Uh... I'm going to assume it's the location of the snowman? Perhaps? No? Talk it contradicts with the location of the snowman. So you mean the snowman was actually in the middle of the garden? But there were no signs that it was moved, right? Gah! So it wasn't this? Then what? If the button was the snowman's eye, was grabbed by the victim. There can only be one answer. Uh, huh. Well, it sounds like hint, hint, nudge, nudge to me, but... It still looks like he took the photo from a distance, so I don't get it. The victim was holding onto the button. Furthermore, the button was stained with blood. I mean, couldn't he just grab it and moved over there? I mean, that how is that a contradiction? I don't get it. I don't get it. We wore the button with stained with blood. In other words, he grabbed the button after he was attacked. Or he could've just been holding it, then he got attacked, and the blood got in the button. I mean, I don't freaking know. For example, if we were to picture it in this way. After being struck in the back of the head, Mr. Cameron lost his balance. As he was falling, he reached out his hand towards the nearby snowman. However, it could not support his weight, and he collapsed while still grasping the button. Huh? But th that means... Mr. Cameron was near the snowman when he was attacked? Indeed. At the very least, he must have been within arm's reach. However... However... It's quite clear that he would not have been able to reach him from his current position. Mr. Cameron's footprints only lead towards the flower bed. Oh, you're saying that because of the footprints, okay. Can we be certain that these, those footprints really are Mr. Cameron's? So we'll need to investigate them one more time. Understood. I'll recreate the time the body was discovered scene one more time. Alright, let's do this. Let's see exactly what we find out of this. Ooh. ooh. No, I'm just kidding. I don't even know. These footprints should match up to Mr. Cam with Mr. Cameron's shoes, right? Let's inspect them again. Well, might as well, I suppose. But I want to inspect both of them. All right, fine. That one's not. That one's pointless. These footprints. Are they really Mr. Cameron's? They're from size 11. Sh they're from size 11 shoes, and these these bleh, huge footprints match up with Mr. Cameron's shoes. No matter how you look at it, they're moving steadily towards the center of the flower beds. When Mr. Cameron was attacked, he grabbed the button from the snowman. You have the great these peak human conditioning. Your arm just can't stretch that far. Let alone an ordinary civilian, it'd be completely impossible. The footprints come from the shoes worn by the victim. This is the case files say. However, does that mean Mr. Cameron was the owner of these shoes? We should re-examine Mr. Cameron's shoes. Alright. Might as well, I suppose. Well, okay, here's the shoes. The shoes should match the footprints, however. However, hmm, these shoes, it seems like they were not the only, not the ones originally worn by the victim. What do you mean? If you look closely, you'll see the laces were tied up strangely. 
And the size doesn't seem to fit quite right either. No? Victim shoes data jotted down in my organizer didn't belong to Cameron. Culprit likely placed the shoes on the victim's feet after he had died. I mean these huge footprints leading to the victim's feet. Were most likely made by someone other than the victim. So then the footprints leading to and from the victim's head must be Mr. Cameron's. No, not necessarily. They seem a little too small to be the victim's footprints. So none of the footprints are his? Then which way did Mr. Cameron walk from? It's quite simple. The victim did not walk here on his own accord, but rather. But rather, we'll find out what he rathered on the next exciting episode! Ah! Oh my gosh, what did he rather? I don't know what he rathered. What do you rather? Can you tell me what you rather? Tell me what you rather. I wanna know what you rather. If you're rather good, then yeah, thumbs up to you. <laughs> oh, I'd rather just end this right now, in fact.